on how can a spiritual being interact with physical matter? That's a very important question. And actually, in the 20th century, we've, the picture of the world as a mere mechanism has died. Uh, we've discovered, first through quantum theory and then later on through chaos theory, that there are intrinsic unpredictabilities present in physical process. Quantum theory, for example, says that you can not know whether a particular radioactive nucleus is going to decay in the next hour or not. You can give a probability, but you can't say for certain whether it's going to happen. In other words, there is a, a, an intrinsic unpredictability. It isn't a question if we calculated a bit better or we measured a bit more exactly, we could eliminate that. Even more surprisingly, chaos theory, which came along in the middle of the 20th century, discovered that even the Newtonian world of everyday physics was much more uh, subtle and, and uh, less mechanical than we had thought. There are these exquisitely sensitive systems, the slightest disturbance from the environment totally changes their future behavior. The so classic were, butterfly waiting in butterfly, China butterfly, can change the weather in Brazil. That's right, <laughs> that's right. It, it grows and grows and grows and grows until you get these storms over the Amazon. That, 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 right. That's right. A very, very surprising uh, result. So that's, the world is certainly not merely mechanical. It is something more subtle than that. The question is, is it also more supple than that? We believe that what we know about the world is telling us what the world is like. In fact, we would hardly bother to do science mm. if we weren't thinking about it. Mm. If you take that realist point of view, you will incline, I think, to interpret unpredictabilities as not just unfortunate patches of ignorance, but as signs of an actual openness. Uh, in, in the future. Not meaning that the future is a random lottery, but that there will be scope for other causal principles to act in bringing about the future. But how could a god d interact with that? Well, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> but I have to deal with how we interact with the world, okay. first of all. Go for it. Um, uh, <laughs> and I believe we have a fundamental human experience of agency. I decide to raise my right arm. Of course, there's a bits and pieces account. Currents flow and then those muscles contract. But I, as a whole person, decide to raise my arm. And that would be an example of a causal agent, a top-down influence, my mental decision to raise my arm upon the physical behavior of, of my body. Now, if we interact in the world in that sort of top-down fashion, it seems to me entirely credible that the world's creator also can interact with the world and bring about events in the future. So I have a picture in which God interacts with unfolding process, allowing the laws of nature uh, to control the, the, the range of possibilities, allowing creatures to explore in a happenstance sort of way uh, these possibilities, but also reserving some providential room for maneuver uh, on the part of the creator and bringing about the, the, the future. If things are unpredictable, you can't pull them apart and say nature did this, human will did that, God did the third thing. But nevertheless, all these influences are at work in the world. That's a perfectly coherent and believable picture, and it's the one I hold. So what is God doing? Is he getting involved in the quantum mechanics of uh, untold 10 to the 80th yeah. <laughs> molecules and parts of uh, quarks and gluons and electron spin? I mean, he's good. it's awfully busy. Well, I mean, oh, God is, if God is infinite, God can be awfully busy, but I, I, don't, I think it would be naive and, and rather foolish, really, to think that God does it all by just scrabbling around the subatomic roots of the world. I mean... I, I think God acts holistically with, with creation. But again, again, you see, because we don't understand how the quantum world and the classical world fit together, the whole spectrum of causal influences in the world is unresolved by us. It, all of freedom doesn't lie at the subatomic level. All of it doesn't lie at the everyday level. And presumably some of it lies at even higher holistic levels than that. We just don't know how to envisage that. All I am claiming is it's a no-go theorem, as people say in science. I'm saying that science cannot preclude the possibility of agency, either human or divine. So God can be working at, at, at a, all, a, level, all, all levels. levels. It's very important that we have a rich, an adequately rich conception of the structure of reality, that we don't have this sort of arid, reductionist uh, picture that sees human beings, for example, as simply uh, replicating information processing systems. I mean, that's partly true of us, obviously, but it's not the whole truth about it. The worst error in metaphysics is to the procrastinating error of chopping off the bits of experience that you don't like to fit it into the bed you've already constructed. <laughs>